Oh, y'all could have kept that going. Anybody feel the precious presence of the Holy Spirit in this place? Oh, we give God all glory. We give him all praise. Thank you to the worship team. Pastor Jeff, they set my soul on fire. What a blessing it is, amen, to be here on this glorious day. I am so glad that Pastor Jeff and I have been hoping that we could do this again. Uh, and we looked, what, about six months ago? Yeah. At uh, trying to pull us together. And we, Pastor Jeff said, what about the last weekend in April? And I said, hey, that sounds good. Right after our church anniversary, right after uh, Resurrection Sunday, yep. uh, Palm Sunday, what a blessed time for the true church yep. of yes, Jesus yes, Christ yes, yes. to come together. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we want to welcome all of you that are watching online. We know there's quite a few of you that are at home and uh, all over this country. We have a broad audience that tunes in to our services, and I'm sure the Common Ground uh, also attracts a lot of folk from across the city and across the country. And so all of you are watching online, we welcome you to our time together on this day. Um, Pastor Jeff, I thought I would start our conversation off with a story. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Brother Joe, yeah. Brother Joe was a uh, quote-unquote a free slave. Mm -hmm. uh, emancipation and proclamation had been given, and he uh, was free, yeah. but not really. Yeah. Because Brother Joe couldn't find a job. Brother Joe uh, could not really express his freedom in reality. And so um, he fell on hard times. But Brother Joe remembered that when he went to church, even though because he was black, he had to sit in the balcony, yeah. mm -hmm. he remembered a lady, Miss Susie. Mm -hmm. Miss Susie was one of the white parishioners there, but she'd always at least say hello to Brother Joe. Yeah. So Brother Joe thought to himself, you know what, I'm going to go and I'm going to uh, visit Miss Susie because I'm hungry. I need some food. The brother Joe goes to see Miss Susie. He knocks on the door. Miss Susie looks, peeks through the curtain, and she looks out. Uh, and she sees his brother Joe. She opens the door, and she looks to her right, and she looks to her left. She said, Brother Joe, what are you doing here? He said, well, Miss Susie, I am hungry, and I need some bread. Miss Susie looked to her right again. Looked to her left, and she said, well, Brother Joe, go around to the back door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brother Joe went around to the back door, and Miss Susie grabbed a loaf of bread, and she got ready to give it to Brother Joe. And Miss Susie said, but before we, before we give you this bread, let's pray. And uh, Brother Joe said, okay. Miss Susie said, our Father. She said, now you repeat after me. Okay, Joe, repeat after me. She said, our Father. He said, your father. <laughs> she thought maybe he didn't understand her. He, she said, our father. He said, your father. She said, our father. He said, your father. She said, well, Brother Joe, why is it you're not repeating the same thing I'm saying? I, it, the prayer says, our father. And he said, Miss Susie. If he was our father, that would make me your brother. Mm -hmm. And you would not ask your brother mm. to go to the back door mm. and get bread. Come on. My prayer today is that when Common Ground showed up, you guys came through the front door. That's right. Thank you. Is that true? Yep. Did you get a front door welcome? Yep. 
So did you feel that way, Pastor Jeff? How Absolutely. Things? Every time we show up here, we get the front door royal <laughs> treatment. I, I do want to thank New Era for opening the doors again and for the incredible hospitality that you always show us when we walk into this space. Thank you so much on behalf of uh, Common Ground for having us again. All right. And Pastor, thank you. Sister Hope, thank you for having us. So why don't you share with everyone why we wanted to get together, Pastor? Um, well, I mean, this really is your fault, all of this. <laughs> so uh, you said yes to a cup of coffee about eight years ago, yeah. and the rest is history. Uh, I used to, we were in a cohort together uh, eight years ago with an organization here in town called the Center for Congregations. Yeah. And after the first meeting, uh, I realized that I needed to be closer to Pastor Moore whenever we were together. And this was a, a cohort that lasted for a couple of years. And so every time we would gather, I would kind of stand in the back and I'd wait to see where you were going to sit down. <laughs> and I would try to get over and sit next to you uh, so that you didn't have an option. Um, <laughs> and uh, that's how I got called. Which led to which led to, to coffee, which led to um, what I would consider to be a mentorship. Yeah. Which is now leading to partnership and cooperation. Um, and I and I, I just want to say thank you for your willingness to take that risk. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. I. Um, In my 33 years of ministry, I sat down with a lot, of, a lot of white brothers, white pastors who wanted more of a transactional relationship. But when I started talking about transformational stuff, they, they disappeared on me. And I wasn't sure about this one. <laughs> <laughs> Is he really going to really, are we going to really build a relationship where we can really become transparent and really move the needle? And so we... Uh, we were so blessed, and, and I haven't met anyone like him. I, I really haven't. Uh, common ground, you are blessed. Mm, thank you. you are blessed. Thank you. I, I think it's so important that, that we learn the whole matter of the gospel. That's right. Uh, and, and I think his approach to ministry is bringing an element to a predominantly white congregation uh, that, uh, wow, that many aren't getting, and, and, and he takes that risk. We're going to talk about risk in a little mm -hmm. bit later, yeah. uh, but uh, tell me, why are we here? I mean, what are you and That's I a good after? question. Yeah, why, why did we? we gather you all here on this Lord's Day? It's a good question, and I think it's because we believe that in Christ, God is reconciling all things, that at the, at the basic level, that God is bringing goodness and his shalom and peace into a broken and hurting world through the person of Jesus. We've been reconciled in Christ, and therefore we have been given the opportunity to be ambassadors of that reconciliation. And so when New Era Church gathers on a Sunday morning, and when Common Ground gathers on a Sunday morning, we want to live into the instructions that God gave us in Micah. He told us what is good, right? Amen. He told us what is right and what we should be about, which is to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. And so that's why we're here at the most basic level, is that we believe that that's what God is doing in the world, and that Jesus has demonstrated that for us. He shows us what it looks like. When he shows up in uh, his home church, uh, ready to, to go public in his ministry, he takes the scroll of Isaiah, and he unrolls it, yes. and he reads from it, and he, he declares his ministry uh, mandate, what he has been called to do. And I think we have it uh, up here on the screen in Luke chapter 4. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. We are here this morning and we gather every Sunday morning because we believe that no matter what the world looks like, this is what God is up to. And we want to be a part of it. We want to be a part of it. Yes. Yeah. That's another scripture that we, we wanted to share with everybody. It says how good and pleasant yes. it is that a man that God's people can live together in what? Unity. Can y'all say that word for me? Unity. Unity. Now, some of you are afraid to say unity. We don't mean uniformity. No. Nope. Right? 
I, we're, we are very different, but we have a spirit of unity. Even though Jeff comes as his whole self, I come as my whole self. Yep. And I remember we had a meeting one time with Common Ground, and one of, some of your members said, well, are y'all trying to become one church? And no, mm-hmm. we ain't trying to become one church. We, we just want to walk in unity as yes. God has called us to That's walk. Right. That's right. We can, amen, we can be different, but have uh, the same, the same approach to uh, how we love and treat one another. Let's read it real good, everybody. How good Good and pleasant it is is when God's, God's, come on, everybody, live live together together in what? In unity. It is like precious oil on the head, running down. Amen. Amen. That is exactly why we're here. Uh, team, can you put that uh, Michael passage back up? Because I thought there were three things that Pastor yeah. Jeff alluded to. What are those three things that I highlighted there? Yeah. Uh, talk about those for a moment there, Pastor Jeff. Yeah, I mean, to, the, the things that God is doing, putting things back together, justice, righteousness, repairing what has been broken. Uh, restoring what is worn out and redeeming what has been um, what has been lost, and I think I love the passage because it, there's a way to justice, right? There's a lot of ways that we could try to make things right, but there's a posture and uh, an attitude, a spirit of mercy and humility that distinguish the justice of God from all other versions that are out there trying to do their thing yeah. and make it right. And I, I, I think that's the, the passage, I mean, that's what Jesus gives us. He enfleshes what it looks like to um, do this in humility and sacrifice. Did, did you not know, church family, that the word justice and righteousness comes from the root, the same root mm-hmm. word in the Hebrew? Yep. In other words, you can't be righteous unless you are involved in justice. That's right. Uh-oh. Come on. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. You can't. That's what Dr. King was writing out of the Birmingham jail cell to his wife. Remember, he, Dr. King wrote his letter, his email, out of <laughs> that jail cell in response to a letter in the newspaper written by eight white pastors telling him and those that were operating in an unjust environment, won't y'all just wait a while? Just just go sit down and don't don't ruffle any feathers. And Dr. King wrote and said, wait a minute. How can you call yourself a righteous preacher? How can you be a righteous church when you're not engaged in justice? They go to, they're, they're like goodness and mercy. They travel together. Yes. And for so long in the church, we have grabbed righteousness and left justice in the refrigerator. <laughs> I'm looking at some uncomfortable faces right now. <laughs> Why, what did Jesus have to say about this when it comes to our walk in justice? Uh, he had a prayer. You and I talked about it. Would you talk, introduce us yeah. to that, that prayer in John's chapter? Yeah, so as he's getting ready to depart, he's with his disciples in the upper room, and he prays for them in a long prayer. But one of those prayers, one, a part of the prayer in John chapter 17 is not just for his disciples alone, he says, but he says, I I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. May be what? May be one. One. Just as you are in me and I am in you. And this is what struck me this morning as I was was preparing. Um, May they also be in us so that the world will believe. So that the world will believe. Our unity is a demonstration of the goodness of the gospel of Jesus. Mm. Amen. 
So that they may believe that you have sent me, I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that we may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved me, or have loved them even as I have lo- even as you have loved me. And I just, I think the work we're doing here is evangelistic. Like when we're working through the difficulties and the challenges of being the unified body of Christ, respecting each other's uniqueness, but, but moving towards the foot of the cross together where we are united as one body. We, that's evangelistic work. Yeah. It's the city on the hill, right? Yeah. It's the salt that, that seasons the, the world that we've been called to be in. And, and, and Indianapolis needs to see Preach, a unified brother. body of Christ. Preach. Right? Yeah. Mm. Jesus looks down the telescope of time Mm. and he sees Mm. us in the last Sunday of April and he prays before he goes to Calvary. The one prayer is that I hope they can be unified, Father, like you and I are unified. And I'm going to die on Calvary's cross so that common ground can create a new era of love. Come on. <laughs> yes. My God. Yes. Yes. That is amazing. He says here, complete unity. I, I, yes. I underline that word. That's right. Complete unity. Yes. Not half unity, not half hearted unity. Right. But what kind of unity, everybody? Yes. Complete yes. unity. Yes. What does that look like? Huh? It's hard work. It's hard work, isn't it? Yeah. Because we've been fragmented, so. That's right. I grew up one side of the tracks. You grew up on another side of the tracks. Mm-hmm. How do we become one? That's right. That's what we're striving. And it's <laughs> by following Jesus, right? We follow Jesus into the spaces where the disordered world can be brought back together in yeah. an ordered fashion. Only by the blood of Jesus. And, and you speak regularly uh, of the story of the trip to Samaria. Come on now. Don't, don't get me preaching now. I, 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 go ahead. And talk no, about you it. go ahead. I, they gave us chairs, but if we need to stand up. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. You go ahead. What happened in Samaria? Well, I mean, Jesus took the disciples to Samaria intentionally. There are three routes. Wait a minute. He said what? I'm. Yep. That, is that good English, Sister Alexander? <laughs> Must needs. But go ahead. What happened? Well, he took, he took the fellas and he took them up to Samaria. And there were three ways to get around Samaria if you were Jewish. Uh-huh. To avoid having to interact with the... Is that me? I don't know. That's the devil. Well, yeah. that is what it is. And, and, he t- and he took him to Samaria. He took him to the place. Wait a minute. You mean instead of coming from Carmel, Come on. coming down through the hood, Come on. we built a bypass. That's right. Is that, uh, 475 and, and even 65, right? Uh-huh. Is that what they did back in the day? That's right. So he's, he's I must needs go down to, through the hood. Go ahead. Yep. And he takes them there uh-huh. in order to show them hmm. what it looks like Jesus. for God's purposes to be made known to everyone, to everyone, equally. Yeah. Now, in your seminary, when they dealt with that text, mm-hmm. it was an evangelistic text. Yes. I don't think they saw a social justice ethic in your seminary. That's right. And I must admit, in my seminary, they didn't either. Mm-hmm. But I think... We are now more awakened. Can, can I, if I say woke, some of y'all get up and walk out. I'm going to say. Awakened. We are awakened yes. to the fact that God's love. How can you say you love God whom you have not seen and hate your brother who you see every day? That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Then he says, you say that, but the truth ain't in you. Mm -hmm. 
Because you can't be all righteous and not have justice walking inside of your walk when it comes to you, Jesus Christ. And so Jesus, so when, that story of the woman in the Samaria, we, it's a great evangelistic message. But really, there's a social justice message for all of us. He wanted the Jews who felt privileged mm -hmm. to know that he had come to save the what? The whole That's world. Right. That's right. Why do we know John 3 and 16 so well, but we don't really, really live by it? Mm -hmm. Come on, say it with me. For God, God so loved the America. <laughs> That's what we are. Okay, say it again. I'm sorry. <laughs> For God so loved the world That's right. that he gave his only son that whosoever. Who? Whosoever. Who? Whosoever. You? Yes. Me? Yes. That what? Whosoever so believeth on shall not perish. So, so he says, we must needs go through Samaria. Um, anything else in that text that I, I, I think that you want to share before we move on? Well, I mean, they were shocked in, in so many different ways. They she, wanted, she was shocked. She was shocked. Uh, and because of the work of the presence of Jesus in that place, they stayed two days. Two days. And the entire town. In the hood? Yes. Two days. Not two hours. Not two hours. Not passing through. Not just one hour on April 30th, but two days? Two days. Oh, you were going to say something. I, 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 <laughs> That's it. I, I just think for uh, us to move from the ideas of unity to the reality of unity is going to require all of us to take a risk. I mean, you took the risk. You said yes to the coffee. You, you were followed around by another white pastor who had another, had a desire to be, you know, in, in a relationship with you. And you, you took a, a risk and put yourself in a space where you had been disappointed in the past. Yeah. Because something else was motivating you. Like, yeah. why, why did you say yes? Because I felt called in the latter part of my ministry uh, to be a bridge. And I think you all heard two of our young ladies talk about being the bridge earlier in the service. I feel like that for my, the sake of my grandchildren and your grandchildren, for the sake of those of you in our congregation today that are white parents trying to raise African-American children, for the sake of those in our congregation that have uh, black parents trying to raise white children. We want our kids and our grandkids to have a better world. Yes. It's, my lovely wife and I talk often. We have four grandsons. And we, we are afraid to death of them to start driving. Mm. Because we have to have the what, y'all? The talk. the talk. And, and so I said, if, 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 if I could risk building a relationship with a young man like Jeff, and he and I could somehow break the ice and somehow emulate, uh, create an environment where others would emulate what we're trying to do, maybe we can make Indianapolis a better community. Yes. Maybe, yeah. amen, yeah. maybe, just maybe. Just maybe we could, we could make this a better world. Because for us, it's more than photo ops. Right. It's more than gathering together every once in a while and yeah. feeling good about ourselves. But right. we actually believe that the gates of hell cannot withstand the people of God unified and moving together in the city <laughs> in love. It can't happen. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. Yeah, and I'm so glad you brought that up because racism is a sin problem. Yes, yes, yes. From the very pits of hell. Yep. It's something constructed. Yeah. Uh, 
by the enemy, through people, to keep us divided. But we are what? One. One. We, we had last, yesterday afternoon, we spent the day uh, in, over at Common Ground in the basement with some of our yes, congregants. Yes. And for me, that seemed like one of those moments where people were willing to step into a little bit of a risky space. Not knowing exactly what was going on, we, we uh, participated in a conversation um, that was titled Sacred Conversations on Race. And it was fantastic. It, is anyone here that was there yesterday? Could you just stand up if, if, you, if, if you, you were there? If you were there on yeah, Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Yes. All yes, right. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes. Good. Praise God. Some in the balcony. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sister, Sister Alexander and her team led us in a beautiful conversation. But those are those places that we have to opt into, especially if you look like me the opportunity to opt out is always available. And so yeah. the, the bravery of being able to step into that space and have those difficult conversations and maybe get it wrong and maybe uh, offend someone and have to ask for forgiveness, these are the things that we are going to have to do if we're going to actually build unity and yeah. not just talk about unity. Yeah. It's easy to talk about unity. It's hard to build unity. Yeah. And, and, and Paul... and. I, I say this regularly. I think most of the New Testament was written to try to teach Christians how to get along. Right? So Paul in Ephesians writes, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. But that's hard work. You, you had to, you've had to exercise that regularly with me yeah. as we've been in relationship with one another. And, and it's just really hard work. It's just hard work Absolutely. for us to do that. Um, you know, speaking of Paul, when Paul was Saul mm. and persecuting the church, when God got a hold of him and changed his heart, Paul then wanted to go to the Jews to be their pastor. And God said, no, Paul, I don't, I'm sending you to an uncomfortable space. You're going to be the prophet to the Gentiles. You're going, you're going to leave your comfortable, Pharisaic, Judaic background, and you're going to go and preach to black and white and brown folk called Gentiles. So as you spoke, it, it, it's, it's risky business, but when you're God's child, you Come have on. to step out of your comfort zone. Yes. Be yes. ye transformed by the renewing of, of your, your mind. minds. That's right. That's right. We've got to have some renewing of our minds if we're going to be, amen, yeah. able to find common ground in this new era. Yeah. That's the church of Jesus Christ. And so, how do we do this thing? <laughs> that's, why, that's why I got to know you. You're supposed to be the how-to guy. <laughs> well, I, I can't do this without my white brothers yeah. and sisters. Uh, yeah, let's, how, how do we do this? Put that back on the caption. That's the question I want to put on the caption. How do we do this? Yeah. How do we accomplish this? You're sitting next to somebody that, mm -hmm. that God is wanting to speak to through this. So we, we talked about um, here in this how-to section, uh, we, we spoke about the, the fact that, um, let me see if I can find this scripture. Here it is, Ephesians 4. Put that up for us, Ephesians 4 and 2. I want you to see something in the text today, church. Let's read it together. Be what? Completely humble, gentle, be patient, bearing with one another in love. In what? In love. In money? In love. Keep reading. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit to the bond of peace. Now, this is what I want you to see in verse 4. Let's read it. There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called to one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, Father, all, who is over all, through all, and in all. Yeah, 
that. Would you do me a favor? Count the number of times you see one in that mm. verse. How many times? Seven. Say it loud. Seven. What number? Seven. Seven is the numerical biblical number of what? Ah, I'm no. ready. To <laughs> For us to be complete, yes. we must be one. Yes. Yes. Not one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. who's that guy? Yes. Yeah. Is that J Jesus? You want to say something to us? <laughs> oh, Rod, uh, that's your phone, baby. They're probably trying to pick you up. Tell them you, you, you in church. Come on. <laughs> How many times did y'all see that? Seven times. That means to be complete, we've got to walk in the oneness of spirit, faith, of mission, of love, peace, and joy, oneness. I believe we could do that. Yes. Will we change the world? We'll change our little neck of the woods. That's right. yeah. Amen. We'll change our church. That's right. We'll change maybe one of our coworkers. Yeah. Maybe one of your uncles that you fuss with right now. Mm -hmm. Everybody say one. 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 I um where do we go from here? Well, I think we keep doing more of the good things that we started. Uh, I, I, I think the invitation that you have made to us to be a part of this family um, has been the the step one of the open door, but I think all of us need to ask kind of the question um, where is the Holy Spirit inviting me to take a step that might be risky? Uh, what, what are the relationships that I need to lean into? What are the spaces that God has already put me in to occupy where I, if I'm wanting to see this blessing that God has for me in Christ, where, where do I need to step out? That second half of that psalm that we read at the beginning uh, says that there's a result to the unity. It's, it's good and pleasant when brothers and sisters live together in unity, yeah. but it results in a blessing from God that when we step into these spaces that Jesus calls us to, it's not just hard work. There is a blessing that is available to us when we experience the goodness that God has, when we take the risk and we step into that space. And I, and I just think the question this morning for all of us is, where is the Holy Spirit inviting us to take a step? Just one step. Um, and what does that look like for you in the spaces that God has called you to be in. Um. Yeah. That's powerful. Yeah. Because we do need to make it personal. I learned that phrase at the Colts game. <laughs> pop, 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 pop. Make it personal. Make it personal. <laughs> and we get, we paint our faces and we jump up and down and scream like we ain't got no sense. At a coach game, and God is saying, no, when you come to church, That's right. when you're my child, yep. make it what? Personal. Personal. That's right. What do I do? Yes. What will I do to help common ground be a different kind of predominantly white congregation, mm -hmm. but the kind that God smiles on? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Has God smiled on you? Has God smiled on anyone? Yes, 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 yes. Chris, just a little verse of that. He's smiling on us today. He has said me free God has smiled on me he's been good 
to me. Can we all say it together? Don't you know that God has smiled on me? He has set me free. Oh, Lord, God has smiled on me. He's been good to me. God smiled on us. Smiled on us. Set us free. You're right. God has, God has smiled on us. He's been good to us. Say it one more time. God has smiled on us. Come and ground a new era. He has set us free. Oh, God, God smile. Y'all come on back up. He has he been has good been to me. He's been good. Come on. He's been good. And he's been good. 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 He's been so good. Mighty good. He wants to be good. He made a way for you. He made a way for us. He's got a ways to go. But the Lord's going with us.